we'll kick off very soon. So in this session, we will give you a very high level overview of uh, state of language technology and onboarding at Wikimedia. I'm Srishti, I'm part of the language and product localization team at the Wikimedia Foundation. And in this uh, session, uh, we have a few people who will be joining us. Uh, we have Amir here, John, um, we will be presenting in person. And there are three people who will be joining us remotely. I think it's super early for some of them right now. Uh, they are at least uh, five hours early than their normal schedule. So kudos to them for joining us remotely. Um, Ami, do you want to say something? Yeah, so just, uh, it, it was, it, it's not, it's unprepared. Uh, just a short time ago when I noticed the name of the room in which I'm going to present, we are going to present, um, it, like it made me emotional because uh, I don't know how many some maybe some of you know this maybe some of you don't it's probably not intentional but uh, uh, Ohrida is the name of a city um, which is now in the Republic of North Macedonia uh, a very important thing happened there uh, a thousand years ago um, some people there uh, who were dealing with you know teaching and sharing knowledge and stuff like that they had a bold idea their bold idea was that uh, sharing knowledge can be done not only in Greek and Latin but in some other languages that people actually speak. Uh, one of the name of one of those people was Cyril, and if you haven't guessed already, those people made the Cyrillic alphabet, uh, which is now used by hundreds of millions of people uh, who speak many different languages. Um, Cyril and uh, his uh, partners are now the national heroes of several countries. Uh, and each of you, uh, each of you here, can be a hero like that. Uh, each of you who decides to do something bold and uh, to share knowledge in some new way, uh, in a new language uh, that people actually speak, uh, in a new alphabet that is easy for people to read, um, in a new format that is easy for people to consume. Each of you can be a hero like that. So uh, this is kind of uh, what the presentation is about and uh, this is how we can help uh, any of you uh, do this. So do you want to start? Thank you, Amir, that was very profound. Um, I uh, forgot to mention names of folks who are going to join us remotely earlier. So we have uh, Carolyn, Ozoma, and then we have C. Scott. So I just want to uh, share a bit about uh, the agenda for this talk. Uh, we will start with sharing a bit of uh, an overview of language representation across Wikimedia projects. Uh, then we'll be talking about language tools that support Wikimedia sites, for example, content section translation tool, uh, translate extension, Mint initiatives and services, what's new happening in those areas, language converter. And then uh, towards the end uh, uh, portion of the talk, we'll be talking a bit about the current status and future direction of languages on boarding at Wikimedia. We'll be also sharing an experiment uh, that we are thinking of doing this year. So before we uh, start with language representation, uh, let's get a quick show of hands here to get a sense of language representation in this room here. So who here edits on Wikipedia or other Wikimedia projects in a language other than English? Ooh, wow, that's a room full of folks. Okay, so uh, the next one is, who here edits on Wikipedia or other Wikimedia projects in more than one language? Wow, lots of, lots of people. What? Not including English, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so with that, I will hand it over to Carolyn to take us through language representation across Wikimedia projects. Carolyn, can you hear us? I can. Can you hear me? All good? All right. Um, I'm Caroline. I'm on the research team at the foundation, and I'm gonna. I and my cat <laughs> are going to provide a brief overview of language representation across Wikimedia projects. So, the Wikimedia Foundation, as you might know, supports more languages than any other large online platform, which is amazing. Um, but how many is it, and and which languages do we support, and what do we know about these languages? Next slide, please. 
So currently, 333 languages have at least one hosted content project. And here, content project is referring to those eight Wikimedia content projects that are specialized by linguistic edition. You know those as Wikipedia, Wiktionary, Wikinews, Wikivoyage, Wikiquote, Wikiversity, Wikisource, and Wikibooks. Next slide, please. Additionally, there are hundreds of languages, over 700, that currently have no hosted content projects, but do have test projects. These test projects are located in the Wikimedia Incubator, the um, Wikiversity Beta, or Multilingual Wikisource. And we'll be talking more about test projects and the incubator a little bit later. So for now, let's look at some more statistics about these 333 languages that have hosted content projects. Next slide, please. Of these 333 languages with hosted projects, almost all of them have a Wikipedia edition. About half of them have a Wiktionary. About one fifth have a wiki books, a wiki source, or, and or a wiki quote. And fewer than one in 10 have a wiki news, wiki voyage, and or wikiversity. Next slide, please. Of these 333 languages, most of them have one or two content projects. Some of them have three or four or five. Um, 13 languages have all eight content projects. Um, does anyone have any guesses as to what languages those are? Feel free to shout them out. I can't hear them, but I'll give you a couple seconds. I think I'm hearing some correct answers. So those languages are Chinese, English, Finnish, French, German, Greek, Italian, Japanese, Portuguese, Russian, Spanish, Swedish, and as of last month, just a few weeks ago, Czech. Next slide, please. Additionally, these 333 languages use 36 different scripts or writing systems. Um, the most common is Latin, followed by Cyrillic, which was just mentioned earlier by Amir, Arabic, and Devanagari. Some of these scripts are written left to right and others are written right to left. So this is a, a lot of language diversity across our projects. And with all this complexity um, linguistically, across our sites, tooling related to language is obviously very important. So with that, let's now hear about the current language tools that support Wikimedia sites. Thank you so much, Carolyn. So before uh, we talk a bit about language tools, we wanted to get a sense of um, what language-related tools that you all use in your work? Would anyone like to share? We can take one or two answers and then move on to the next slides. Translation tool. Do you remember the name of the translation tool? <laughs> Mint, someone said Mint. Transliteration tool. Deepal. Okay. Okay. Language input tool. Those are a lot of tools. OK, so with that, over to Amir to take us through the next section. The green one is next. OK, hi. So my name is Amir. Uh, and um, we have developed uh, all kinds of uh, tools uh, over the last 
many years. It's quite possible, so you mentioned some of them already. I will briefly mention what they are, uh, just to put you in context about uh, what have we been doing till now, and uh, uh, maybe uh, try to give a hint about uh, where we are going with that in the future. Uh, so again, it's possible that uh, s at least some of you know about them. Uh, maybe it will be new to some of you, uh, so that's great. So. Is this working? Yes, this is working. OK, so let's start from what we call uh, the Translate extension. It's, uh, it's a MediaWiki extension uh, which works on uh, several websites. It was initially made for the TranslateWiki.net website. Uh, how many people here contributed anything to TranslateWiki.net? Quite a few of you. That's, this is great. So TranslateWiki.net is the place where the user interface uh, of all the Wikimedia sites uh, is translated. So it's uh, buttons like notifications, talk, log in, log out, uh, delete, and so on. Um, there are something like uh, around, last time I checked, it was about 22,000 strings that have to be translated if you want like a complete translation of everything. Although not all of them are actually used all the time. Anyway, um, if you see anything on uh, the wiki in your language that doesn't appear in your language in the user interface, translatewiki.net is the place where you go to make it in your language. And uh, I strongly recommend that it should be 100% translated in all the languages. It is in a few of them, but it should be in all of them, so I strongly recommend that. Another place where the Translate extension is used is uh, some of the Wikimedia community sites, uh, most notably Wikidata and Commons, uh, and Meta, and MediaWiki.org, which is the more technical site. Uh, so on these sites, it is used not for user interface translation, but for translation of pages that are not Wikipedia articles. We will speak about that in a moment, in a minute. But this is for translation of pages that are not Wikipedia articles, such as help pages, documentation, newsletters, um, banners, central notice, and so on. So um, the interface is the same. Uh, this is how it looks like. It may be familiar to some of you. So you can see that um, it shows uh, the translation. It shows the English string. In some cases, it actually doesn't have to be translated from English. Most of the time, it's from English. In some cases, it can be also translated from other languages. So it shows you the English thing that you have to translate. It shows you empty space where you write your translation. And then you push uh, publish translation, and that's it. That's all you need to do as a translator. Uh, you don't have to go through moderation. You don't have to deal with any source code files, uh, nothing. Just go here. Publish, next, 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 and uh, translate as much as you can. Um, this, uh, by the way, this translation is into uh, Tumbuka, a language that uh, has, the Wikipedia in this language has existed for many years. Uh, for many years, it was almost completely dormant with almost no activity. About a year or two ago, somebody started translating there, which is fantastic. Uh, so somebody came, uh, came there and see, oh, there can be a Wikipedia in my language, and uh, I want to continue. Is there a question there? What, what, what's that? If, if I'm not only translating myself, but I use a source, I'm using a source, could be also an AI, but other things. Uh, should I give this source this, uh, in the translation? Oh, like you, do you mean like for like credit and licensing and stuff? Yeah, like? something. Th th there is a link, and the hyperlink according to the Creative Commons license is enough. So, so okay. yes, uh, you, like you don't have to do it. It's, it's done automatically. OK. Uh, OK, so let's go um, uh, next. Uh, so this is an example of translating. Uh, into Arabic uh, here. Uh, this is an example of um, uh, translating a uh, help page uh, here, um, uh, an FAQ. And uh, this, again, is, you see that it's pretty much the same interface, but it's not user interface. It's, it's, a, it's an information page. But it's largely the same user interface. Now, that's the translate uh, extension. Uh, I, I never get tired of reminding people that most people uh, don't know English. Remember, most people don't know English. We are trying, we are trying. Uh, you know, uh, we have this, uh, we have this uh, vision. Uh, imagine a world in which every single human being can share an assumable knowledge. If we speak about every single human being, most people don't know English. So uh, this means that uh, you should not only write articles in the Wikipedia in your language. You should also write the user interface in your language. Um, now. Let's take a look at the next thing you see. So uh, these are the statistics for localization. So some languages you see are at 100% and some languages are not. So bring your language to 100%. Uh, these languages are uh, in a bit lower. And you see, like, if, if one of your languages is here, you can translate some more and you will go up. And uh, all languages eventually should go to 100%. Now let's speak about 
content translation. So content translation is for translating Wikipedia articles. So till now we, sp we were speaking about translating all kinds of other stuff that is not Wikipedia articles. Content translation is for content for Wikipedia articles. So uh, this has been uh, deployed um, uh, since two thou 2015. And uh, it basically shows you, as you can see here on the picture, it shows you the original article in any language. It doesn't have to be English. Uh, you can translate from any article to any article. And then shows you empty space for translating into your language, uh, where you type the translation into your language. And you type it, and then you publish, and that's it. You have a new article. Um, um, Translate Wiki has existed since uh, the, the, the previous thing I was speaking about. It uh, has existed since 2006, and quite a lot of people loved it. So people uh, were asking us, can we have something like this, but for Wikipedia articles and not just for other stuff? Because Wikipedia articles is the most important central thing. Um, so we decided to do it, but then uh, we said, OK, like Translate, Translate Wiki is, uh, it's like it works, but Wikipedia articles are much more complicated. So we decided to make a completely new extension for this. Did, did anybody un understand this joke? Yes, a few people here, right? If you didn't understand this joke, it's not a big deal. Um, so uh, this this is how content translation looks like. This is uh, so there are these uh, cute uh, uh, characters around this uh, uh, city, the Bebok. So this is the Wikipedia article about these uh, characters, and this is a demonstration of how. Uh, this uh, uh, the Wikipedia article about them is translated from English into the Belarusian language, which is spoken in Belarus, which is right across the border here. And uh, that, that's how it is. You just um, uh, you see something uh, in your language. Uh, you, uh, you see something in the language you can read, and you have empty space to write it in the language you know. And one of the favorite features of uh, Wikipedians who translate articles is that uh, they don't have to upload photos, because usually the same photo is necessary uh, in the translation. They don't have to look for the file name of the photo. They just click, and the photo appears. And uh, lots, lots of Wikipedians love it. Uh, it also, as you can see, it also uh, automatically adapts uh, the formatting, uh, like bold font, uh, italic font, links, and so on. Um, and uh, there is uh, um, also a more recent development uh, in content translations, basically the same extension, but uh, a newer uh, version, which is also adapted to uh, mobile phones. Uh, because initially it was made for desktop, but this, the, the newer version, which is called section translation, it works not by the whole page, but by sections and sentences. So it would be easier to do it on a small uh, screen. So this is a demonstration of how it works uh, when uh, translating from um, uh, English into Greek. Uh, and again, you can translate from any language to any language. Uh, now, a very, very, very common question about content translation. Oh, so you're doing something like Google Translate. And the answer is no. Uh, content translation is not a machine translation tool. It's a tool for creating new articles. It does use machine translation in some cases uh, to make your translation faster. You can enable it. You can disable it. You don't have to use it. The responsibility for the published uh, Wikipedia article is on the editor just like it is with all the other articles. Uh, if you publish uh, a bad machine translation, the article will like your translation will unfortunately be deleted. So don't publish bad articles. Uh, is there a question there? <laughs> uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, I usually translate the messages uh, on Meta from uh, English to Italian. And sometimes uh, the, um, I receive a proposed translation uh, which are uh, some uh, something between Italian and Spanish, <laughs> and uh, uh, they uh, they have uh, uh, written uh, something like apertium mm. and similar messages. Are they uh, machine translations? Are they AI translations? Yeah. So uh, I will briefly answer that, and uh, we'll have to go on. But basically, yes, apertium is one of the machine translation engines that we use. It was actually mentioned in one of the talks earlier uh, in this room. Um, it works well for some languages, less well for some other languages. Again, I if you don't like this suggestion, just don't use it. Uh, if you think that the suggestion is useful to start and then correct uh, the mistakes, then then use it. And like, if you think that it's not useful, just don't use it. Basically, that's the that's the short explanation. Uh, also, an important thing to mention is that all the articles that are created by content translation, they are just articles, just like all the other articles. There's nothing special about them. They can be edited. They can be deleted if they are not very good. Uh, although. The um, uh, statistics of deletion for translated articles are usually much lower in uh, pretty much all languages uh, than um, the deletion statistics for 
articles that were created not using translation, which we are quite proud of. Uh, it was used, uh, so in the, in the presentation earlier, uh, it, it also mentioned content translation. It was probably prepared uh, a few months ago when it was one and a half million. By now, it's already two million. So in less than 10 years, we had two million articles translated using content translation. We are quite proud of that. Uh, th thank you, actually, because uh, some of you, thank you, uh, some of you used content translation to create those articles. You are the really uh, important heroes here. Um, so, yeah, and uh, with that, I give it to Jun Harald. Yeah, um, I'm just going to ask this question. Um, is there anyone who has, uh, well, next slide, actually. Uh, are there anyone here who speaks a language that doesn't have machine transla translation available? Yes. English? Oh. Uh, from which language, uh, may I ask? <laughs> oh, right, yeah. That's, uh, I think that's a community issue, not a tech issue. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> there's not much we can do about that, I think. Uh, any others? Peter? Yeah, there's several languages that I try to support. I don't really speak it fluently, and if you wait for that, try to support any code. Ocherero, Oshindonga, Oshikwanyama, Kwekwekowap, all those southern African languages that, that yeah. we have in Namibia. There's apparently too little material to have uh, to have a machine mm. translation available. Yeah, and those languages, I assume they don't have Wikipedia editions yet. Um, Incubator with yeah. a few pages, yeah, yeah, not more. But we do see that a lot of the languages they add for you know Google Translate and Mint and stuff are languages that have recently gotten Wikipedias as well. So I think that might be a major way of influencing what they support as well. Uh, any other languages that are not supported? Yes? <laughs> and uh, Japanese Wikipedia has a deletion policy of uh, using machine translation. Because of uh, uh, machine translation makes Japanese sentence is low quality even, if, even now. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, Santai language also uh, supporting the uh, machine translation. That is uh, Mint, I think. Uh, but uh, there is many tools uh, uh, which are better than Mint. I think uh, that should be implemented for Santai language. Hmm. Thank the you. Right people are here for that. <laughs> right. Uh, behind you. <laughs> so next. Some more. more? Okay. So next we have Uzoma. Uh, she should be uh, with us online, I hope. Yes, I yes. am. Uh, can someone hear me? Yeah. So um, two of my One community minute, languages Uzoma. have been approved recently, the Dagari and Kusa. I wanted to know if um, tra content translating is already um, available for that. And then with Dagbani, I, we started with Amir. I remember we had a session with him to, to, uh, to introduce us to content translator, I think it's been like two years now. I want to know the state of the contribution by volunteers at this time, how many of them are translating, because most of them are doing manual translation from um, English Wikipedia. Uh, I don't know if people are really using content translator for Dagbani. Do you want to yeah, just a quick answer. I, I will have to like dig in the statistics. I cannot answer immediately. Uh, content translation is supposed to be available very shortly after the domain is created for Dagara and Kusal. If, it's, if it doesn't work, uh, please tell me. It's a bug. But uh, like right, right after the domain is created, content translation is supposed to work. We will actually speak much more about that topic uh, later in the presentation. Uh, as for statistics for Dagbani, I cannot tell you immediately. Uh, talk to me after that. I will check the statistics. Oh, yeah. I, I just wanted to add about the languages that's n not in machine translation. I work with uh, um, a Caribbean uh, islands where they speak Papimento in two variants, and one is machine translated and the other one isn't, I believe. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. It, it's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, all right. So let's give it over to Uzoma online. Hello, everyone. Good to be joining you um, online. Um, my name is Soma Zumba. So in this uh, part of the presentation, we'll be looking at an overview of an initiative called MINT, 
I've heard someone talk about Mint um, to here today. Um, so we'll be looking at how it has evolved in just over a year and its future directions. Um, Mint is an acronym for machine in translation. It is a machine um, translation service hosted in Wikimedia infrastructure. Uh, it runs translation models from organizations that have released them for use, modification, and sharing by anyone. Next slide, please. So this is what the main backend service looks like. Um, you can see on the left is where you um, impute the paragraphs, um, paragraph of the source language, and the other part is where the output is and um, where you have the target language um, that outputs uh, whatever uh, language you want. And you can see uh, we have five translation models, the NLLB, the Opus MT, the Soft uh, Catala, um, Indic Trans 2, and MADLAD um, 400. These uh, open source translation models have helped Wikimedia provide vast translation support to over 259 languages, um, five, uh, 55 of which are language without translation services before Mint, and 25 with no Wikipedia yet. So um, hopefully, maybe some of the Wikipedias are in incubator, and once they are out from incubator, um, they would also have a machine translation. Some of these uh, languages with Mint right now, as the only translation services are Santali. I heard somebody talk about Santali, um, uh, testifying that Santali has a machine translation, uh, I mean Mint. And yeah, I understand that also with time, it will improve. We also have a Kashmiri to Buka and others. Next slide, please. Since 2023, the main service has developed as a back end. Uh, the main service was developed as a back end service. Uh, the language and product localization team has utilized this uh, machine translation service in different contexts to provide language support for our existing tools. The team incorporated it into the content translation. Um, Tool. Uh, we had Amir talk about that earlier on. Uh, the main service, like uh, Google Translate, provides an initial automatic uh, translation for articles at the starting point, aiding translators in to work efficiently. I mean, it's just like uh, Google Translate in um, in the content translation tool. It's a machine. Uh, translation, like uh, I said earlier on. The main service is also integrated into the Translate um, extension to provide translation suggestions to contributors while they translate our platform um, to uh, interfaces, user interfaces, and also in media wiki and meta pages uh, to different languages. Uh, remember, you can also um, decide not to uh, use the machine translation or use it, or I mean, yeah, but it's there aiding translators to do their work efficiently. Um, next slide, please. So this, the, the main services we just, uh, I, I, I just talked about, um, that uses content and section translation, that is incorporated in content and section translation tool and the translate extension are uh, classified under the means for translators uh, initiative. Um, so far, it has made a significant impact in helping translators in 135 languages. Um, 
135 languages uh, translate Wikipedia content efficiently. Um, we also received uh, positive feedback, as you can see on the slide, from some com uh, Wikipedia uh, contributors. And this is one of the feedback we got um, about uh, Mint. And this uh, community got Mint for the first time, and this is what they had to say about Mint. Next slide, please. With the integration of Mint for translators, it yielded uh, an increase in the translation activities and um, a fast growth of content in Wikipedia, especially in those uh, 55 um, languages uh, where Mint provided machine translation for the first time. You can see in the graph uh, the spike after Mint um, was uh, enabled in these um, 55 uh, wikis. And yes, uh, Mint has, um, this is what the results, the outcome of uh, enabling Mint in those 65 uh, wikis. Next slide, please. So another uh, Mint initiative, uh, an initiative class I will talk about is the Mint for Wiki Readers. Uh, this uh, initiative, initiative incorporates uh, Mint machine translation support into Wikipedia articles in a way that um, allows readers to learn more about the topics of interest uh, from other languages. Uh, in these articles, uh, we have also clearly differentiated, automatically translated content from community-created ones. It also, um, also encouraged um, readers to access and contribute to community-created um, content when possible. So um, imagine that you are searching for something um, about plants and you uh, you want to read something about plants, but it is in English. Like Amir said, not everyone can speak English. It's fluent in English. In that um, language, um, I mean, in English, um, you would prefer to read it in Korean. Unfortunately, uh, you notice there is no um, human translated version of this article in, in Korean. The good news is, um, is that I can, person can still read an automatic translated version provided by a main service with a click of a button in that um, article or in that in interface while um, having stumbled upon the English version of an article. That is what um, the Mint for Wiki readers can do right now. Next slide, please. So, so far, um, these are the, the wiki, 23 Wikipedia that you have the means for wiki readers enabled. Um, and we plan to reach out to more Wikipedia communities to propose enabling this feature in their wiki. Since this feature was enabled for uh, the listed um, Wikipedia in June and um, July this year, um, that's like a month ago, we have seen um, a 300% spike in Mint um, usage, which is a good indication. And we're looking forward to what we'll learn so far with uh, this initiative. You can see um, we have Igbo, we have um, the, uh, Haitian, we have Korean, we have um, Hindi, all these um, Wikipedias have now have um, links for wiki readers enabled in them. I'm sure we have also noticed that um, while um, reading an article, all you need to do is go to the um, language selector and like we demonstrated on the, the screen record, and you'll be able to access links in any language provided um, provided it's enabled in that language. Next slide, please. 
So with um, what's the uh, Wikimedia Foundation um, language and product localization team has achieved so far with the different uh, Mint initiatives, um, we hope to continue working to um, one, make Mint APIs available for the broader internet, um, solidify the services to other projects based on needs. So in conclusion, the team's uh, ambitious, um, ambitious goals, goal is to reach a state where the sum of all human uh, knowledge can be accessible to every person in the world because language will no longer be a barrier. That is the team's future direction with the Mint initiatives, and um, we hope to continue um, evolving this um, service and making it um, better and using it in all ways um, that can help make sure that language is no longer a barrier. Please um, follow this work and uh, you can also uh, read more uh, about Mint from, our, from the Mint um, Media Wiki uh, page. Thank you. Uh, we have a question. I think some, um, someone from the on-site can help us with this. Thank you so much. Yeah, I guess no questions. Thanks a lot to Uzoma and also to Caroline earlier, uh, who joined us in a very early hour. It's about 6 or 7 a.m. where they are. So thanks to them. Uh, 4 a.m. My mistake. My mistake. So, yeah. Um, so now a little introduction question. Uh, is there anybody here who speaks a language that can be written in more than one script? No, well, maybe you also, no? Uh, yeah, so a few people. Um, and uh, which scripts uh, are those? So think about this. Uh, so like Polish is only written in Latin. Uh, English is only written in Latin. But there are languages that are written in more than one. Uh, a few of them are represented here. So with that, uh, we are going to see Scott. Yes, can you hear me? Okay, I am uh, C. Scott Ananian from the uh, Content Transform team at the Wikimedia Foundation. I'm going to talk briefly about Language Converter, why we use it, uh, what it does, and then some reasons you might want to use it or not or improve it. Um, and I am um, I'm joining you from just down the road. I'm not feeling well, unfortunately, so I can't be with you in person. I really wish, wish I could, but um, we'll uh, we'll talk about this uh remotely here so let's first talk about why we use language converter on some wikis um amira had mentioned it uh, languages can be written in more than one script uh, in order to keep this talk as broadly accessible as possible i'm going to try to use english throughout so i'm not going to require you to be literate in multiple different scripts um or languages uh, german german speakers are familiar with black letter calligraphy and it can be Certainly can be considered hard to read in its most extreme forms. This one isn't so bad, but in most languages, the script differences are more fundamental. The third line here is an IPA transcription of English. That's a phonetic transcription. This has a symbol for each sound in the original sentence and apostrophes mark uh, stress syllables. And um, as with the case of most, most alternate scripts, there's no longer a one-to-one -one relationship between the, so the usual Latin script and the symbols used in this transcription. So, the next line is an actual alternate script for English. Uh, it's an alphabet called Desiree, uh, used in the 19th century. And the symbols in Desiree correspond to the phonetic symbols um, in the IPA transcription, not to the letters, uh, the Latin characters in the usual English spelling. Um, you can also uh, consider something like Morse code as another possible script. That's the final line. This looks uh, very different, and not many English speakers would be able to read Morse code, but it does correspond one to one with the letters in the original English spelling, although there is no upper or lower case in Morse code. So in some languages, some languages can be written in more than one way, and there may or may not be an exact correspondence between symbols in the script. But that's not all. Languages also have dialect. Uh, these are small variations between languages, although the definition of a dialect is very fuzzy. The old saying is that a language is a dialect with an army, referring to the fact that the difference between a separate language and a dialect of the same language is often more political or cultural than scientific. Um, here are some example dialect pairs in English between British and American English, or English as it is spoken and used in India. 
Again, I'm using English to try to maintain a common reference here, but other languages like Portuguese and Brazilian Portuguese have variants which differ to the about, about the same degree as the examples shown here, and others differ more. I'm going to call both script differences and dialect differences variants um, because uh, the, the, the language converter tool handles both of these in, in roughly the same way. Um, information can be omitted in certain variants. I mentioned that Morse code didn't have the case distinctions of other ways of writing English. Um, conversions between some variants may be reversible, but it's more common for that not to be the case. In American English, an elevator is what we would, would be called a lift in British English, um, but both British and, British and American English will use lift as a verb or as a dance move. In our phonetic Desiree alphabet transliteration, we have the word but, but those symbols are also the spelling you'd use for Dame Clara but here. Um, there's a distinction in our traditional English Latin script, but not in Desiree. Um, and uh, again, that's a pattern that holds for many, many, many other variants in many other languages. So language converter is used to bridge script and dialect differences on wiki, differences between variants. Here are some of the larger wikis which use it. On Chinese wiki, we have two major writing systems, traditional and simplified characters. There are also numerous dialects represented, some of which stretch the definition of dialect for political reasons. Most readers on Chinese Wikipedia can read and write only one of the scripts. Those who read and write traditional characters usually do not know simplified characters and vice versa. On Serbian Wiki, in contrast, most readers and editors can read and write both scripts equally well, Latin and Cyrillic. There are, however, dialect differences which are also reflected in, in spelling. Kazakh Wiki has three writing systems, Cyrillic, Latin, and Arabic. Currently, Language Converter can translate to Arabic, but not from Arabic. Kurdish has Latin, Arabic, and Cyrillic, and in this case, MediaWiki doesn't yet support the Cyrillic. Um, there is an indigenous language in Canada, which has a syllabic writing system. Um, that's another, another example of a writing system which loses case distinction from, um, from the Latin script. So running quickly through others, these are the wikis which have full language converter support. Um, these also have partial support from language converter. Um, these use a language which has multiple scripts and has an automatic language converter available, but it is not yet integrated in MediaWiki, so this is potential. And these languages use multiple scripts and could benefit from something like language converter, but doesn't yet have an existing conversion system we could use. Uh, note that Polish is in the potential category here. Um, quoting from Me MetaWiki, uh, Polish is sometimes written in, uh, in Cyrillic. And a Cyrillic converter for Polish Wiki could reach a, a potential audience of 300,000 readers in uh, across the border in Belarus. So languages with script or dialect differences exist. Uh, we're going to call these variants of a language. How does language converter help? Language converter allows editors to write an article in their choice of variant and allows readers to read an article in their choice of script or, or dialect. There's a drop down menu. You can see the, the, the arrow on the left. Um, which lets you select your preferred variant. There's also a specific URL for each variant, which is the downward pointing arrow, so that, for example, search results can direct a reader directly to the appropriate variant. Um, in, uh, oh, sorry, I, I've been not been telling people to advance the slides. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, but you're, you're, do you're doing fantastic. Uh, in Wikitext, uh, the markup for language converter looks like this. Um, there are bidirectional rules which say that every lift should be converted to elevator and every elevator should become a lift. That's not actually correct in this case. So there are unidirectional rules as well, which say convert elevators to lifts, but leave the lifts alone. And you can explicitly disable conversion um, for a lift which you want to make clear is not an elevator. There are lots of other rules as well, which you can read about at this URL, but these are the highlights. Next slide. So how well does it work? Where variants are lossless and easy to identify, it seems to work pretty well and allows us to expand the readership of our content with little extra effort from editors. Uh, the article source can become a confused mess of different variants over time. Uh, and this causes trouble when editors are not fluent in both scripts or dialects. In some wikis, the local community in response has decided to use a single dominant variant for authoring content and uses language converter to translate content for readers only. Um, next slide. So. The main limitations of language converter. Yeah, you just keep going there. Uh, first, the, the variant used by an editor for a given section of text is not explicitly marked. If the scripts are sufficiently different, it's easy to determine that the source variant is even without marking. So, um, but for example, Serbian still uses Roman numerals in the Latin script. So for a short text like King Leo the 18th, 
there may be more characters in Latin script in that in that text than Cyrillic, which causes confusion. Uh, and in other variants, the script's character sets can overlap significantly. Language Converter doesn't handle word boundaries particularly well, which is an artifact of its initial development for Chinese Wikipedia, Wikipedia where that wasn't important. Article titles are still in one script or the other, and we try hard to ensure that URLs are resolved no matter which script you wrote the title. Since the actual variant used for the title is not recorded anywhere, anywhere, we try to convert every URL into every possible variant and see if any of them results in a matching title, which works, but it is sometimes surprising. And finally, a glossary is a collection of language converter rules for a specific topic area, which is used extensively on Chinese Wikipedia. This allows conversion rules specific to, say, movies to be included on a page about the latest blockbuster. In some languages, the glossaries needed to convert between variants can be very large. This is handled on Chinese Wikipedia with an elaborate system of templates and gadgets, but it's not currently part of the core language converter. Next slide. So can we do better? Uh, this is this is food for thought for, for you all. Next slide. So for every wiki on which we enable language converter, uh, next slide. Oh, yeah, yeah, keep going. Um, we need to consider the cost of the alternate solutions. Perhaps the variants should be treated as separate languages with separate wikis. Perhaps we should insist that all the author content use a single variant. Often the, deci the decisions made here are as much political as technical and reflect community desire to work together or be considered one or not. Um, there are places we can't reach without supporting certain scripts, and there are other places where certain scripts are banned, so that providing access to our content in that script has legal consequences. Um, tools like content translation to tr migrate content between related variants or tools to more easily synchronize content between closely related wikis might affect the decision of whether Language Converter is the best tool for your um, language set. Small wikis often say they need a larger community to help build their wiki, and so they wish to band together with related language variants, despite some of the inconveniences of Language Converter. Language converters are difficult to write and maintain. The intersection of the set of PHP hackers, media wiki contributors, and linguists who are able to enumerate transliteration rules for a set of minority language variants can be extremely small. Further, any change to the conversion code has the potential to affect a lot of existing pages on wiki, which are hard to foresee, test, or fix. Um, but language converter tends to work best for longish texts which are frequently changed and updated in language variants which are closely related but easy to differentiate and where most editors can read and write all variants. It can be used in situations where none of those linguistic properties are true if there's a strong enough cultural desire for unification. But language converter may not be the best solution for extremely short texts like user interface messages or texts where the linguistic divergence is either very high or very low. Where linguistic divergence is high, we currently use tools like Content Translation um, or, or Mint. Um, but it may be worth thinking more about the ways we, we might use those tools even for more closely related variant pairs on Wiki where we currently use uh, Content Translate, uh, Language Converter. Machine translation ought to be really extremely accurate when you have close variants like the ones which Language Converter currently uh, targets. Anyway. So I hope that gave you a basic understanding of the languages that can benefit from Language Converter and what it can do and what it struggles with. Um, perhaps we have a little bit of time for questions, but that is all I have to say. Thanks. Thank you, C. Scott. We miss having you in person here with us, and we hope you feel better soon. Does anybody have any questions for C. Scott or any of the presenters uh, who have shared about their topics with us? Or someone. Um, two questions. First, why a script converter is called a language converter? <laughs> and the second question is, and the second question is, uh, there are a lot of communities that build their own data, particularly parallel data that that could be used for machine translation and training. Um, and uh, we often see mistakes in uh, uh, language models and um, the translation engines that are used on. Mint uh, particularly have a lot of mistakes uh, because there's a long way to go. Uh, I was wondering how communities could contribute to uh, training data, and they should be um, attributed in return. It's um, at the least violation of their human rights when they're not attributed for the uh, labor that they do uh, voluntarily. And uh, that's what you know. Google, Meta, all of the uh, uh, popular language models do. They scrape data uh, off of the internet, uh, use that for training, and then when the translations happen online, there's no attribution to the people that have actually contributed to creating that data. Um, and 
you know, Wikimedia movement has a, play, has a role to play here because the Wikimedia Foundation uh, particularly is working with these companies to get um, their language models for Mint. Um, yeah, that's my question. Someone more? No. I can I can take a stab at answering the question if no one else wants to, to do it. Um, I, I just I'll just say I agree with you. I think, um, in my opinion at least, and this is you know this is speaking for for me personally, the most effective way to contribute um, training data is just to continue working on wiki translating articles. We have a huge um, resource every time that uh, one of our editors translates an article from one language to the other that is uh, useful training data, especially in a lot of languages which aren't well covered by commercial data sets. I don't think we take advantage of it well, and I think the attribution um, question is, is definitely something that can um, that, that ought to be addressed. But um, the good news is that we can already start building that training data, even though we're ha we haven't figured out how best to use and exploit and uh, build things with it yet. Does that make sense? There's some one more question here. Hello, um, a question for the language converter. Um, if we want to test or to implement this on a new wiki, who should we contact? And is there documentation for that? That is an excellent question. Um, I would, um, Amir, I might, I might, Toss it to you. I um, do the technical maintenance of the of the back end for language converter. So if uh, if you need to actually implement a language converter from scratch, I am certainly the person that you could um, ask to help. Um, but in terms of determining guiding the process for whether or not language converter is the right tool for um, for a particular wiki for a particular language set, I would probably uh, defer to the language team on that. Someone more? Uh, I, I, mean, I, I can try. Like, I don't have much to add to what C. Scott said. Uh, yes, uh, the, so C. Scott uh, knows the technicalities, the internals of language converter uh, much better than I do or anybody else in the uh, rest of the language support team. Uh, C. Scott is an, another team. Uh, but uh, if you like, it's, it's OK to direct your first questions to our team because we are pretty fine with, like, as the defined support uh, people uh, to get your first uh, questions. Uh, I hope this answers the question. There's, there's another question there. Um, I, I just learned today of an interesting challenge that some languages have that their script can't be entered on mobile devices. I'm wondering if it's possible for um, Wikipedia to offer an input method for those that would uh, appear in I don't know visual editor. Ooh, that's uh, that's uh, that's not this question is not related to what we have just spoken about, but it is kind of related to what we do. Uh, I will answer quickly. It was kind of not planned. Um, many years ago, uh, around 2011, 2012, we did develop uh, a tool for desktop uh, that uh, helps people type in their languages. We actually still maintain it and develop it and add some new languages to it. Uh, I didn't have time to speak about this, but I mean, it's a thing. We did this, for s we are doing this for several languages. Um, these days, the situation with input is relatively better than it was uh, like 10, 15 years ago. Most languages do work well on mobile phones. If there are languages that cannot easily be written on mobile phones, I really want to know what they are. So please send these people to me. I really, really want to know what they are. It's a bit less good on desktop operating systems. But you know, these days, uh, phones are becoming more and more important. So like, I would gradually shift uh, the focus to phones. So that's, that's all I can say about this right now. I, I would really love to know what these languages are. I'll just briefly say that the visual editor team, um, the editing team definitely uh, did a lot of work with input methods in, in the 2012 era, as, as Amir had said. Um, and that code is still there if there is need to brush it off, I think. Thank you. Um, I think with that, we will move on to the next portion of the talk, which is about state of language onboarding. Uh, we have three portions to it. First, we'll talk about language gap. 
Uh, then we'll be sharing a bit about tools that exist for incubation, incubation journey, what it looks like for language communities and some of the challenges they face. And then in the last part, we will uh, touch upon some recommendations for future incubation, and we have some time for dis discussion as well, and we would love to hear your thoughts on some of the questions. So I guess we have uh, Carolyn to talk about some of the numbers related to language gap. Carolyn? Thanks so much. Yeah, yeah thank you. Um, so I mentioned earlier that 333 languages have at least one content project hosted by Wikimedia. This is definitely something worth celebrating, um, but it can also be looked at in a different way. 333 is only about 5% of the world's 7,000 languages, living languages. So in other words, there are thousands um, possibly more than 6,600 living languages um, that are used by millions of people around the world, but that don't have a hosted Wikipedia or Wiktionary or Wikisource, et cetera. So Wikimedia's vision asks us to imagine a world in which humans can freely share in the sum of all knowledge. So as we think think about language as knowledge or as a means of sharing knowledge, we definitely should understand where we have gaps in terms of language coverage and representation and how we might fill those gaps. Next slide, please. As Srishti said, we're gonna look at some numbers. Um, currently, there are more test wikis than hosted wikis. Um, so we currently have more test wikis in the incubator, Wikiversity beta, and multilingual wiki source than we do live and hosted. So let's delve into the incubator a little bit more. Next slide. Currently, a little bit over 1,000 languages have at least one test wiki in the incubator. However, many of these projects have been abandoned. So if we go to the next slide, if we look at just active or substantial test wikis, we see that 602 languages have test projects that are actively being worked on currently and or have substantial amounts of content that's been created. Next slide. Of those languages with active and substantial projects, currently 424 of those languages have no hosted wikis, only test wikis. So what this means is that 424 languages are currently only represented in our test spaces um, on Wikimedia. And I've provided some examples uh, below. Many of these languages have millions of speakers, such as Ibibio, Marwari, and Moray, or close to a million signers, such as with American Sign Language. So what we see here is the potential to add 424 languages to Wikimedia's language coverage within our hosted spaces. But first, these languages must graduate from the incubator. So, We'll go to the next slide and ask you all a question about graduation. Would anyone like to respond to this question? Hello. Yeah, so uh, my name is Sadek Shahadu. I work with the Dagwan Wikimedians User Group, a language affiliate in Ghana, working to support 16 mutually intelligible languages spoken across Ghana, Benin, and Burkina Faso. I'm also one of the steering committee members for the Wikimedia Language Diversity Hub. So I will start with, we, we started in 2021, like actively 2019, 2020, actively working on the Dagwan Wikipedia project. And it took us one year and one month 
but one of our language graduated in less than one year, which is the Dagari Wikipedia. And then uh, Kusal took more than, uh, I think one, we, one year, three months. Um, since 2020, we've been able to um, bring on board five language projects, four currently live. But uh, I saw you shared a um, list of incubators that are ready for approval, but yet not published on the main Wikipedia space. And I see one of my, the languages that I work with, uh, which is Mori. And I have a lot of questions about that right now. Um, we've done everything that we can to be live. And I understand from the language committee that everything works well and we are good to go. But there's a very um, big challenge that I face with the community. They've been asking me when uh, language is getting approved. And there seem to be a very difficult um, task right now for the uh, language committee because they are stuck and they don't know when the language will be approved, even though they met all the requirements. And the reason is that um, there's a namespace on the English Wikipedia Manual of Style, which has the same um, name as the Mori um, ISO code, which is MOS. Though Mori have done so well, like working extensively on the incubator and meeting all the requirements, creating over 1,000 articles, uh, fully fledged um, articles, they don't have any hope when the language will be approved. And the simple challenge, I'm happy Amir is here, Yon is here, a lot of people are here. Uh, we, we need to find a solution at least. I need to carry some information to the community because I'm frustrated right now. I don't know what to tell them. Even though there's a general, um, you know, challenge with similar, I see in the fabricator discussion, similar cases that happen. So I, I would like Amir to say a lot about the challenge. All I know is there's a conflicting name between MOS for Mori Incubator and then Manual of Style that the English Wikipedia community don't want to let go. We also need it because Mori is spoken, is the largest of the languages that we work with, spoken in Ghana and Burkina Faso, about 11 million speakers. Yeah, so the question is, what can we do at this stage to get the Mori out of the incubator? Uh, this is a very specific question, although like it's it's wonderful. I, I love it. Uh, so for, for those who like more or less know the background, uh, what happens is that every language is identified uh, by a language code. We use the uh, ISO 639 standard for language codes. In the ISO 639 standard, the language code for this language is MOS, which is also the abbreviation for Manual of Style on the English Wikipedia. So the English Wikipedia uh, uses this in links, and if you want to link to the uh, Moria Wikipedia, you have to use the same thing, so it's kind of like a technical problem, like same uh, name. I am not currently involved in resolving uh, this technical issue. I know that somebody is, and I uh, cannot, ju I just don't know any more details. This is a bad problem. It affects like this specific language. Um, uh, my feeling is that it will be resolved quite soon, and what you can do, like what the Mori uh, uh, writers can do at the moment, is keep writing good articles in the incubator. And this is actually my message to all the languages. What I, I know it's difficult, but uh, keep writing good articles in the incubator. This is the best thing you can do. Um, how to make it uh, less difficult, uh, we, I hope we will speak about this in a few minutes. If you can keep your response under one minute. Yeah, we want to move on to the next sections. Thank you. I see. Uh, OK, so none of the languages that I tried to, exp uh, to uh, support has ever made it out of the incubator. And so you hear another somewhat frustrated response here. Uh, I presented in 2014, I believe, in London. I presented at Wiki, no, not at Wikimania, but at Wiki in Daba. I presented this classical dilemma or vicious circle that editors come from readers. 
So people who read Wikipedia start writing Wikipedia. Uh, that is a, at least a very, very strong stream. Now, if you have a language which uh, doesn't have translation available, so it belongs to the same class of stories, right? Uh, and if you Google for something, even if an article is available in Incubator, it will not be among the first eight or nine pages of results, right? So now I wonder what kind of what kind of problem is to be solved by keeping languages in the incubator the first time? It can't be the dollar fifty for a domain registration. So what is what's the point of of forcing us into the into incubator and keeping us there? That's a very good thought there. I think we are going to touch upon this topic a little bit later in the presentation. Uh, Carolyn, you can resume now. Great, thank you. <clears throat> Thanks for sharing various times that y'all have spent with projects in the incubator. Um, in terms of how long, actually, if you could go to the next slide, I'd like to do that one first, I think, based on the conversations that we just had. Perfect. So, oh, perfect, yeah. So how long does it take to graduate from the incubator? Um, this varies pretty widely. Um, when we analyzed graduated projects, the average amount of time that it took to graduate was about three and a half years. And the range was 51 days to 15 years. Um, so quite a lot of variation there. And we can see that there's variation depending on the project type as well. Um, Wikipedia versus Wiktionary versus Wikinews, et cetera. And if you can go back one slide, thank you. The amount of time that current projects, many of you mentioned that you currently are working on projects that are in the incubator. Currently, the test wikis that are in the incubator right now have a wide variety of amount of time that they've been in the incubator. Current projects have been in the incubator anywhere from 12 days to 18 years. So again, we are seeing a lot of variation in terms of how long different projects are spending in the incubator. So with that, we might wonder how does one graduate? What, what steps are involved and what are we working on at the foundation right now related to this? So I'll hand it over to Srishti to tell us more about that. Yeah, you won actually. Uh, oh, hi. Uh, perfect. For Thank you. you. <laughs> for those of you who don't know me, I'm Jon Harald Sövi, and I'm, I've been part of the language committee since it started in 2006. Uh, and I'm also part of the language diversity hub, and I work in Wikimedia Norway. Um, so the incubator was started in 2006, but it wasn't actually started because of the language committee. It was started before the language committee existed. And the reason was that uh, test wikis that didn't have a proper wiki actually did that in Meta, MetaWiki. And, um, People didn't like seeing all those test edits in the recent changes on MetaWiki, so someone just created an incubator to sort of just get rid of those uh, pesky edits uh, in for new languages and stuff. Who cares about that, right? Um, but the incubator is the tool that we use in the language uh, committee when we look at you know uh, which languages to approve or not. Uh, um, so this is an example of a landing page for a, for a test wiki on. Uh, on the incubator uh, for the Silheti Wikipedia, which is a language spoken in India, I believe. Um, and there you can see the infamous prefix at the top. Uh, and then you have a bunch of uh, hopefully useful links in, in, the, in the box uh, down there. Um, one of the links goes to this tool that I, well, I wrote this iteration of the tool, but it's like a, an improvement of a tool that stopped working that we had for many years uh, called language, uh, well, code lookup. Uh, which gives you an overview of, uh, you know, uh, some of the things that a language uh, uh, community needs to do in order to to get approved, um, inclu yeah, I in including like uh, translations in Translate Wiki because we want to have um, a bare minimum of the uh, interface translated into a language before we approve it. Um, and we also use this tool called uh, Cat Analysis. Uh, this is how we, you know, track the changes that go on in each wiki. Uh, 
not many people use this tool except for us in the language committee, I think. Uh, but it's, it's very useful, but it could need an upgrade. Uh, this tool and the previous iteration of the code lookup were made by uh, Robin Pepperman, who is here in Wikimania, but not in this room. There is, yeah, awesome. And he also made the Wikimedia incubator extension, uh, which has hugely improved uh, the way the incubator works, because uh, without it, it would be, yeah, very bad. Uh, so thank you, Robin. <laughs> um, so uh, the journey for a language that comes into the incubator is that, um, well, um, in theory, we should try to follow this path, but sometimes people skip a few tab uh, steps, but that's okay. Um, so first, they should um, request the, uh, a creation in uh, MetaWiki after uh, hopefully checking that their language is actually uh, eligible themselves. Uh, and then we will, um, well, it says approve language creation, but like we will verify that, okay, this language is uh, eligible uh, to get a wiki. Uh, and then uh, the community should work in the incubator for, well, in theory, they should work uh, like three or four months, uh, but we're looking for active communities. So we're not looking for number of articles or anything like that. We're looking at the number of, you know, active contributors over time. Uh, so that's the most important criterion. Um, uh, that in addition to, like, like I said, uh, having a minimum of the, uh, what we call the most important messages in MediaWiki translated in TranslateWiki. Uh, and once those two criteria are met, um, the language committee will um, approve, the, approve the language um, after verifying it with an external expert, and that can be somewhat of a bottleneck sometimes. Um, but usually it, it, it goes relatively fast. Uh, but there have been some instances where it takes us a long time to, um, to find the experts. Uh, and after we do that, uh, we will request the creation of the wiki, uh, and the developers will create it. And I have to give a real big uh, shout out to, especially Amir um, um, Sarabadani, uh, Lads Group, uh, who has made some huge improvements in the, you know, uh, process for creating new wikis. Because it used to take months and months, and now he can do it in like, you know, a few days. He and a few others. Um, and the final step is that we uh, export the content from the incubator and then import it into the new wiki. Uh, and I actually did that for one wiki today. Uh, the wiki was created three days ago, and I just did it now, uh, a few hours ago. So it can be done quickly as well. Um, yeah, uh, there are some challenges with the incubator, of course, uh, especially this uh, prefix stuff, which, uh, uh, which is you know, not ideal. Uh, but I've been working for the past couple of years to try to at least improve the experience for people in the incubator so they don't have to deal with prefixes and stuff like that. Uh, and also uh, making it possible to add into Wikilinks, which wasn't really easily possible before. Uh, so I think we've made some improvements there. There are still a lot of uh, features that are just aren't available in, in the incubator, like uh, content translation, which we've talked about a lot, uh, is a big one. Uh, and also, like, the Wikidata support is spotty at best. Like, you can use it, but you can't really use it in the same way that you would do it in a Wikipedia. So, yeah. And also, you know, lack of keyboards, dictionaries, and whatever. So, yeah. Um, yeah, the, the language committee, uh, which, which I mentioned, was founded in 2006. Uh, and we have uh, 13 members. A few of us are here. Uh, I'm, uh, Amir and Sadiq are part of the language committee uh, and some others, but yeah. <laughs> uh, we started as a subcommittee of something called the Special Projects Committee, uh, which doesn't exist anymore. Uh, so we became a standalone committee in 2012. Uh, and we have 13 members from, um, like I said, from many, many dif different countries and languages. And yeah. So yeah, I think that's it. Um, yeah, so I have a question about languages that are approved in the incubator um, that have ISO are not approved in the in the incubator for the lack of vocabulary indigenous to that language. Um, 
So there are languages that have ISO codes but have been denied or haven't been able to get out of the incubator because they have been told that their language has too many loan words, such as the example that commonly comes to mind is Noongar. Um, I remember in yeah. Stockholm we were talking about that and she was really struggling with getting her language approved because due to history of oppression and all of that, um, she their their language has a lot of English loan words. And then there is another example in the U.S. Um, with Afro Seminole Creole. Their language has, because of history, um, utilized a lot of English loan words. And so they have been intimidated and in even trying to start a Wikipedia because they have just assumed they'll get they won't be able to get it through. Um, right. So is there reasoning behind that? Are there any changes and discussions behind that, especially when there are ISO codes? approved for these languages? Mm. Uh, I can't answer about the afro seminal one because I don't, uh, I haven't seen that case. Uh, but I do remember the Nungar, Nungar PD project uh, really well. And, um, you know, it's a difficult case because uh, they obviously want the wiki to support their culture and language and stuff. But most of their test wiki was actually written purely in English about the Nungar culture and people instead of, uh, you know, be in the Noongar language. And we, you know, that's not really how language editions work in Wikipedia, unfortunately. Uh, so, but I did encourage them to like, maybe start uh, like a third party wiki uh, about their, about those uh, things instead of, you know, having it as a Wikipedia. I think it might suit their uh, use case better. Yeah, okay. quite possibly, yeah. yeah. Thanks everyone for your patience so far. I just realized we all have been sitting in this room for over an hour now. You all are really passionate about language tech topic, it seems, thank you. 10 more minutes to go. So um, next I'm going to share with you a little bit about this uh, new and very small experiment that addresses some of the challenges we hear about in the language incubation process. If you want to learn about this new initiative, you can go to Future of Language Incubation page on MediaWiki.org. And this experiment also addresses some of the recommendations that we gathered through a series of conversations with relevant st stakeholders on this topic in the last uh, six months. And uh, this experiment will be part of Wikimedia Foundation's annual plan for this year. So before I talk about the experiment, what this is about, uh, just want to share this very interesting story of uh, Kadazan Dusun language Wikipedia. So this is an indigenous language from Malaysia. And apparently, they were inactive for over 10 years after they uh, first started an incubator. But then they were reintroduced to incubator at Wikimania Singapore last year. And since then, they have been organizing a lot of edit-a-thons and events. And uh, their uh, community members, they have been contributing a lot of content. And all these efforts, uh, they led to the launch of Kadazan Dusun Language Wikipedia this year. Uh, so I think this is a moment of joy for all of us. I see we have a community member from Malaysia community here with us. So uh, this photo is of community members from the Kent Club in Malaysia. And uh, these folks, they were heavily involved in uh, these efforts. And the reason I wanted to mention this language is because these are the kind of languages uh, that we are hoping to address uh, through the experiment. So what is the experiment idea? It's very simple. It is to provide production wiki access to five new languages to start with with the goal to evaluate if by accessing some of the modern Wikipedia wiki features that we see, like content translation or wiki data, which are not currently on incubator, it can enhance editor productivity. And we are also hoping to learn uh, from this experiment if this approach is something that can be effective for language incubation and if this is something we should explore in the future. So this is a glimpse of the kind of conversations that we have had with folks in the last six months. 
Like someone said, editing on incubator should feel similar to editing on normal wikis, but we are far from achieving this goal. Someone else said that we should forget about incubator completely, and this relates to Peter, your comment earlier, and find another way of starting a wiki because of the complexities around it. It might take time to improve the technical side of it. So these conversations, they have really helped us to shape the experiment that we are planning to do. And I also really want to give a huge shout out to the Language Diversity Hub's research on uh, this topic of barriers experienced by contributors to small lang uh, ver language versions of Wikipedia, because uh, this research has uh, really helped us to shape this experiment as well. They have documented all the technical challenges, and I believe they interviewed uh, members from 13 language communities just talking about these things. And uh, I was also very happy to meet some of the folks from the Language Diversity Hub yesterday over dinner. Some of them are here. So very interesting fact here that this is not something very new that we are talking about here. Until 2006, wikis were created using an automated system, but they were created in non-standard ways. So to address this issue, the incubator and language committee, they were established. So if you will look at the screenshot on the right, you will see that this is from 2002 uh, by a community member from Russian Wikipedia soon after it was established, so almost like 22 years ago. And this is how the languages were created back in those days, that you could just send an email to the mailing list and somebody would address it and it would all be done. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, the experiment that we are hoping to do, we will try uh, to be in line with the current processes that the language committee has um, uh, you know, established, and we are in conversations with them about this. So what will the implementation for such experiment look like? Very simple again. We are not going to build any new tech to start with. Uh, it's going to involve a bit of research, analysis, and uh, leveraging existing uh, tech infrastructure. So we'll identify a set of test wikis um, that can be a part of this pilot. Then we'll create uh, these wikis in production infrastructure and help them move out of incubator. We'll monitor their content progress on production wiki versus incubator, like how they are performing on production wiki now versus how they were doing in incubator. And we'll also try to mark these wikis as new to um, differentiate them from other uh, wikis for the pilot period. And towards the end, we will review the status to see if there is any change needed for the wiki. So what will be the inclusion criteria? Um, it has to be a Wikipedia to start with. I know you all will say that there are so many other Wikimedia projects that uh, we should think about as well. But uh, to start with, for the sake of experiment, it's Wikipedia. Uh, it, uh, the test wiki, it has at least two active editors and 30 edits in the last three months. And if it's either an RTL or LTR language. So that, that's the minimum criteria. But then for the selection part, uh, we are looking at uh, some of the very popular methodologies in data analytics space to see how we can maybe choose a wiki from one of the five data clusters that we will form. And these uh, data clusters, uh, they will be categorized by three-month activity. Uh, for example, edits or new pages in the content namespace or average monthly active editors, time spent by a language on incubator, and so on. And uh, then from these clusters, we are going to pick a wiki. Um, and after sampling them, this will also go through human review to ensure that the language is valid, could potentially graduate, represent a diverse mix of regions, and has no major concerns about having a production wiki. So this is what the timeline of this experiment is. So far, we have had conversations with folks, gathered recommendations, tried to identify small solutions that can be undertaken as experiments. And right now, we are in the experiment kickoff phase, trying to define a selection criteria and measurement plan, and uh, also talking to LANCOM, language committee. And once that is in place, we will uh, set up production wikis for the selected wikis uh, for the pilot. And um, the last phase would be about doing some sort of analysis to understand the editing activities of wikis and conclude the next steps. So 
I also want to share that there were several other recommendations that came up in the conversations, and we bucketed them into two categories. One was about streamlining technical infrastructure, and another one was about exploring social pathways, which we did not really explore much. We were mainly exploring the tech infrastructure one. And uh, as you can see, the one in orange, that's the one that I was talking about here. But there are so many others that we could be talking about. And if you all have any ideas, you can you know, learn more about these recommendations on the wiki, and we can all uh, have a chat later. So uh, these are the recommendations. And yeah, now we have some questions. I think we have about five minutes left. Yes. So if you have any thoughts or questions, now is the time. Yeah. One more question, please. You can be quick, please. There is someone more? No? Uh, OK. All right. Sorry. My, thank you for sharing. Um, uh, it was really insightful. Um, with regards to the Language Diversity Hubs research, I was one of the participants. And I, I just want to recommend that um, the community resource team have a look at the research publication. I conducted the research with uh, some African language communities. And they have, we identified some barriers which I think the community resource team can help address that. Uh, there were five outstanding barriers that we identified. So I, I would like to share it with the community resource team if they want to have a look at it. Thank you. Thank you for your work, Sadiq. Thank you. I didn't have Sorry? I didn't have the question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, at the expense of, of seeming like a pain in the neck, um, I read your, I understand your part of the presentation now as saying the reason why we can't automatically create all valid Wikipedias, Wiki News, Wiki Voyages, whatsoever for any language code we've got is the existence of the language committee. Is that correct? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, no. So, uh, kind of the point of the language committee and the language proposal policy is to um, not limit the amount of languages we get, but to make sure that we actually have viable communities for those languages. Because we hate to create a wiki and then there's absolutely no content, and you know, it's a it's a magnet for spam and vandalism and everything. And the stewards deal with that a lot on very small wikis that have no activity now, and we don't want to create any more wikis that have no activity and no community. So the entire point of the process is really to make sure that there is a viable community of more than just one or two people uh, who can contribute. So, yeah. And, uh, and, uh, if I, uh, and if I may add, uh, like I understand your question, but you see, it's not, it's, it's, not only, it's not only spam or lack of activity, which are also problems. There's another problem, which is hoaxes. Mm. It happened at least twice uh, that people created a wiki uh, and the language written there was not actually a language that was declared. Uh, so to prevent these hoaxes, the language committee has to exist. Can the language committee process improve? Yes, absolutely. But uh, like I, I understand the frustration, but there are reasons for, for its existence. Uh, oh, it's maybe different from what you have uh, written over the board. Uh, my, co my concern is uh, uh, the current interface of uh, mobile, as uh, Omir Haj also mentioned that we are uh, more focused on mobile devices. Uh, I noticed that uh, when I was uh, training a few editors uh, about the uh, uh, content translation tool, that uh, content translation tool uh, in uh, mobile interface, uh, there is a missing of uh, uh, navigation link uh, for the content translation tool. So uh, in, you can easily uh, navigate uh, in the desktop version. But in mobile uh, version, uh, you cannot navigate to translation page. So that's uh, uh, really important, I think, uh, uh, to add in uh, yes. uh, mobile so interface. Yeah, yeah Thank you. I actually mentioned this. So there's a, there's a newer feature recently developed in content translation, which is called section translation. Uh, which can also work on mobile phones, uh, can also work on desktop, but it is mainly uh, intended for mobile phones. It's very new. 
uh, it's not entirely doesn't entirely support all the languages yet, but uh, I'm not sure that it supports Santali yet. But uh, I hope that it will support Santali eventually, and uh, that it's it's still in development. Like it already works well in several languages, but not all of them. So uh, it's definitely on the way. Uh, important question. It supports Santali already. Yeah, oh, I see it in okay, maybe okay. I mean, maybe. Sorry, maybe I missed it, but it, like it's supposed to. If something doesn't work, let's let's talk about it after the presentation. I think it's time it's finished. Just 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 to just to uh, summary uh, related to what I said in the beginning. So. Uh, uh, like some time ago, uh, Sadiq there in the back, he asked uh, about the support for uh, Dagbani, and then the support for Dagbani is still partial, and there's no machine translation. So recall what I said in the beginning. Like a thousand years ago, there was no Cyrillic alphabet, and then some people started writing the Cyrillic alphabet, and now hundreds of millions of people write in it. And ten years ago, there was no Wikipedia in Dagbani, and there was almost no content of any kind on the internet in Dagbani. And now there is, thanks to Sadiq and his friends. So <laughs> it's heroes like this. It's heroes like this who start this. And uh, we are just here to help. Thank you. Miru, miru.